shift gears at this time and talk with Wilmington Mayor Mike Przicki about his plans for the city of Wilmington. He's our first person this week. Welcome, Mayor. Thanks to be here. So roughly six months in office, still lots to tackle, such as the city's gun violence. What's your reaction and plans going forward? Well, I think, um, I mean, for a lot of people, six months retrospective is important. For me, it's just been day after day just trying to make progress. And I feel real good about what we're doing. Uh, I think we understand the nature of our problems. I think poverty is, um, is at the root of, of what we have to deal with in our city. And it's funny, I look at, uh, I look at cities uh, that had, have had great progress over the year, most notably New York City, which is very, very different than ours, but it has neighborhoods that are similar. And in their worst neighborhoods, they have much, much lower crime rates. And if you take a look at those neighborhoods, you see that, that the jobless rate is much lower than ours, that people are feeling a part of the system. You've got people who are engaged in, in the American franchise. And to me, that's, that's the major effort that we've got to uh, undertake because we've got to get people working. We've got to get people just in a normal flow of life and not sitting around on corners thinking about what kind of mischief to get into. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, but a six-year-old shot by a stray bullet uh, was among the number of 100 victims or so. Um, there was an arrest. The first suspect was let go, then there was another, but that was kind of qu kept quiet. Can you explain that? I, I cannot begin to explain it. The best, in, the best uh, information I have is that the Attorney General's office uh, had responsibility for that case and it was their policy not to reduce, release information. Now we did because obviously the public was very interested in this case and so we did. We were accused of, of jumping the gun and just trying to make a big deal out of it. Look, we, uh, we had information. We did the best we could with the information we had. As soon as we realized that the individual we had in custody uh, uh, was not the individual we were looking for, we, we released him. And that's the best we could do. Uh, we're not, this is not about headlines, good Lord. <clears throat> you know, all we want to do is get some of these guys off the street. You know, what we find out, and this is, this is information I'm collecting today, but we are finding out that the people who are in the system are, are seriously repeat offenders. And they're people with backgrounds that don't suggest, but predict that they're going to be either shooters or getting shot themselves. We have people who've been shot three times in a couple of years. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm this is a dysfunctional part of our community that we've got to deal with. And so I think, you know, look, we hired a, a great police chief. I think he's doing an outstanding job. He's as dedicated as you can imagine. He's putting, he's putting uh, strategies in place that we believe are going to work. And so we've got to be patient. Yeah, actually, we had the opportunity to travel with the chief, chief, the new chief, Chief Robert Tracy, and he took us on the West Center City section. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> he said a goal of his was to go to community meetings. Uh, I've, I was actually, I actually attended the Hedgeville meeting where you uh, mm -hmm. attended as well. Have you learned anything new from the residents? I think, um, no, I don't think we've learned anything new. I think that the, and I don't think we're trying to, I think what we're trying to do is create trust so that the residents feel good about picking up the phone and calling us. To me, that's the, that's what we've got to do. I, look, I've got to build up trust as mayor in communities that aren't used to seeing a mayor and haven't seen me enough, and the chief's got to do the same. And I believe that's going to happen, and when it happens, you're going to see the, the interchange of information, which is what we need to uh, reduce crime. It's interesting that you talk, that you, that you mentioned trust, um, because at the Hedgeville meeting, it seemed to be a few community members who wanted a quick fix. How do you explain a quick fix when it comes to violence? Is there one? <clears throat> no, there is no, you know, vi violence, is not, violence is not a problem in and of itself. It's a symptom of a bigger problem. And it's not a symptom of a small problem. I mean, our violence is what results when the normal, normal social flows don't exist anymore. When you don't have the normal cadence of going to work in the morning, coming home tired, going to bed and starting the process all over again. Uh, it's uh, the result of broken families and schools that don't work and kids not interested in school. It's just a much, much more profound set of circumstances we have to deal with. And so anybody who tells you, 
I remember Michael Nutter from Philadelphia said, anybody who tells you there's an answer, a, a simple answer to this, he said, stay away from them because they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. Okay. Well, outside of gun violence, let's talk about some of the new construction right at the corner of North and Orange Streets. Sure. There's a new Caribbean restaurant. There's an apartment complex being built right across from that. Uh, how do you plan to feel feel well, like I think the, all so, these apartments? Yeah, so I'll anticipate your wealth. First of all, what's remarkable is that of all the apartments that are on Market Street today, m largely Buccini Poland's project, I think he's got one vacant unit. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've pre-rented that unit you've spoken about uh, that you referred to over in Orange Street. They've got 100 units already pre-rented. So wow. we have a tremendous demand here that people simply don't understand. We have outsiders don't understand. We understand the appeal of the city. I think there's a national trend in moving back in the cities. Uh, and we're enjoying, uh, we're enjoying that same uh, experience here. Louis Capano is building uh, 160, 170 units right on the riverfront, right up from Market Street. He uh, he's, uh, intends to build several hundred units over on Lee Boulevard, Miller Road area. Uh, then, of course, we've got a large apartment project going up on Pennsylvania Avenue. I yeah, think it's about I've 170 units that. as well. I mean, so mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got so many good things going on. Then the riverfront, we've got two hotels that, uh, that are being planned to start over the next 90 to 120 days. We've got the bridge we're putting up. Uh, we're doing a, uh, a large uh, development strategy, strategic plan for, uh, for South Market Street. There's an awful lot that's very positive, and our view of the world is we're just going to we're just going to keep watching the positive things and not be taken down by the negative stuff until we get that under control. Okay. If there's one thing you want our audience to take home from this interview, what is that? I think I just said it. I think people have to understand that there are so many good things going on. We have been held hostage by this crime issue for five years now. I mean, all we focus on is that and we forget about all the good things. There are so many very positive things going on. You know, employment is up. We don't have people leaving the way they were talking about for years. All of a sudden there's a new sense of optimism and I really believe that uh, I think we're in the right direction. Okay, Wilmington Mayor Mike Przicki, thanks so much for being here. Uh, for those of you at home, you can watch this interview in its entirety by going online to newsworks.org slash Delaware.